Hello. Hope everyone is well. First day back where new where the new uh, new MPs are sworn in and all new new MPs. So I just thought why well, don't I do a bit of a live stream because I just want to ask you a bit of a question when when we get a few people in, that's all. Give me a quick minute. Da, 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 da. Give me a quick minute. Right. Oh, yeah. Hello there, Spoonies375. Good, good afternoon, Bernie Barrows. Can you hear me now? I'll, I'll just turn the sound off on, on the what's happening here because it's all just sound like... Uh, all sounded like uh, they're all going a bit mental, but <laughs> up. <laughs> so all right, no worries. I'm just sort of like working my way around this anyway. I'm I'm only going to be doing this for about an hour ish anyway because I've got other things to do. But I just want to let you know that I've I've not forgotten you all. It's just that with the parliament being in recess and all that, and <laughs> yeah, no worries, Spooner. <laughs> But I'll just say, when it comes to, uh, st st like, you know, my channel is, it's all about, usually about what's in Parliament and uh, select committee meetings. But my trouble is, when when uh, Parliament's in recess, I'm a bit sh knackered, you could say. I'm a bit shafted. And I try other little things. I try other little things, and uh, more often than not, it's a miss than a hit. So I I'd, I'd just basically thought, why don't I do... Uh, a bit of a live stream and just ask what you what would you like me to do you know when parliament's in recess i have been busy i've been doing a little bit of a i suppose in a way it could be a little bit of a daisy Bla daily blase documentary because i went into a last week i went on the internet and i just typed in best best uh select commit committee moments and i found a little bit of a what what you could say a little bit of a gem of um, some clips and uh, what I was basically doing I was could say I was looking at these and that and I thought oh maybe I could use this <laughs> yeah and, hello Dennis Pennock <laughs> that's a great name is that great name and and I was and I was looking at it and I was basically just thinking shall I do a few of these, you know, just buy me time while I'm waiting for, while I'm waiting for what they call it, for Parliament to get back from recess. And what I was basically doing, my internet, it wasn't the best at the time, it kept freezing and, and doing it like it's basically doing now. It's uh, it's not, not going well at the moment. But anyway, we'll, we'll soldier on. But and I, and I, as I was watching it, I, like as I were watching it, I had to basically what you could say start watching it from from the start because every time I try to move it to where I want it to go, it it just sort of like froze and won't have it anywhere because like my internet at the time it wasn't the best. But anyway, as I started watching it, I just absolutely um but it was from 2016 at the at that at the time and and let's just say it's it was quite illuminating very very illuminating some of you might have watched it you, oh that's an interesting bio of resmog's so-called political career oh that's an idea as you can see Paper, uh, paper. I'm doing a doing a Liz Trust there. P paper and a pen. Get there in the end. Anyway, we've got, got the black rod. <laughs> yeah. Go on then. I'll just. Let's, can you hear it now? It's basically all quietened down now. Bye. 
Biogov degree smog. That's an idea. Members of the House of Commons, the Lords who are duly authorised by virtue of His Majesty's Commission to declare the opening of Parliament, <coughs> desire the presence of this Honourable House in the House of Peers to hear the Commission read. That's it. You're stealing my tech. Hello, Valentine Chairman. Hope you're well. Yes, apparently he's the father of the house now, by what I was reading. A red faced gammon. Another five years of getting absolutely trousered at their bar, won't I? <laughs> I'll turn it off now because it's. Turn the noise off because they're basically just chuntering amongst themselves. But yeah, like as I say, I. I try other things when when uh, you could say Parliament's in recess and uh, sometimes I hit and more times I miss. But but uh, but anyway, they've they've gone off now. But sometimes I hit, but more times I miss. And so I just thought, why don't I do a bit of a live stream and just ask you, you know, any suggestions? Because I'm a little bit baller. Let's hope Hoyle has competition. He's been. Too pro Tory in the past. <laughs> well, I get, I get the feeling he might have an easy time this time because, like, let's be honest, there were there were loads of what you call absolute charlatans and liars, weren't there? So, something tells me I think it'll be a little bit different. There's no Jacob Reese Mogg. There's no um, Spafford Johnson. There's no. Dizzy Liz Truss, so we'll just start away and say I'm sure you'll we'll get the old odd one or two swivel eyed loons. Well, that'll be interesting, won't it? Who's going to take over from the Conservative Party, especially when uh, <laughs> only takes nineteen no confidence notes to be <laughs> thrown in? <laughs> I don't envy whoever takes up that position because let's be honest, they are you know, they are going to. Toss pretty soon, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I was saying, I it was uh, I was in the situation where I'm trying to find good ideas, and more often than not, I miss than hit. And it's like when it comes to stuff like uh, what's happening on wherever on talk TV and this and that and the other, and you've you've we've got. Yeah, looking for a seat in the House of Lords. Yeah, probably is. And you've got Max doing all that, and, and there's one or two others, and they're much better at it than me, so I don't bother. But like as I said, I've not posted out for a few days, not because um, I am couldn't be bothered, it's because I'd actually just run out of select committee meetings that, that I'd found, and, and I thought, if I keep going any further and further back... I would, <laughs> we could be into 2015 but as I say when I found that video it was interesting and it gave me some ideas but as I was watching this video it became clearly that th there's more to this video I'll tell you what it was about you remember the Mike Ashley situation in 2016 where he went, where he went to a select committee meeting all I can say is very revealing and very eye opening and there were, th there were three meetings in that first there were the there were the the union representatives and what they had to say was oh my god unbelievable but and it i just couldn't believe what i was watching so as it my first original thing was to just clip a couple of funny bits with uh mike ashley but as i was watching it i thought oh my god some of the stuff i heard in there was absolutely scandalous unbelievable that and when you hit when i've got it all sorted and i think it could be about as long as an hour and a half so but don't worry i'll chapter it when i get when i get the chance when i get it get it sorted but as as i was watching it i think i just realized that there's, there's more to this than even though it's in 2016 some of the stuff i heard i'm thinking won't surprise me if it's still going on today. There are 
It was absolutely amazing. There's another one where I was watching where they had the owners of Google in uh, at the... Oh, oh, some accounts committee. I've forgotten its name. It scared me with uh, Dame Meg Hellier. That was interesting <laughs> in, from 2016. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, Burko, he was brilliant, wasn't he? he was... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Another one was... Uh... I forgot her name now. Her name's escaped me. God, I'm getting bad case of amnesia. She was brilliant. Oh, her name has escaped me. But I will, as, I will, as I was watching it, it was very, very illuminated. So I'm... <laughs> so what I might do is... I'm... Once I've nearly got it finished and completed, there's little bits and bats. It could be about an hour and a half. That and I don't know if anybody's ever heard ever heard of the the. I think his Labour MP Paul Blumfield for me. He was a star. <laughs> he proper wound up Mike Mike Ashley. Really wound him up. <laughs> but that's what I'm gonna do. I, I while I've been sort of like waiting for. Parliament to get back into recess and get into the swing of things. That's what I'm just going to do. I'm just going to work on this. But that's the reason why I'm asking you this question. Have you got any ideas that I could sort of like get my teeth into and and give me something to do while Parliament's in recess and sort of like for future, you know, when Parliament's in recess? Because we all know that this channel's niche is about the select committee meetings and stuff that's in Parliament. And well, you've got other channels that do all the things like what's happening on uh, the Jeremy Vine show and what's happening on LBC and this and that and the other. They've got that covered. And whenever I try and do that, it, they're just more like miss than hit. So so I, I tend to move away from that, and I don't really know where my niche is on this channel. But, yeah, if you can give me some decent uh, some ideas that come into your head, Hello, Barry West. Hope you're well. <laughs> yes, I think he generally saw the light from his tarry days. <laughs> but, yeah, that's like, as I said, it, it's just that if you can give me some decent ideas, you know, that I can put into my, my head, that then I can, I say, I've, somebody's on a bio of uh, Jacob Rees Mog. Hello, escorts. Well, hope you're well, my friend. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I was umming and ahhing about maybe doing a live stream about this, but I just thought, you know, I'm a little bit stuck and I'm a little bit stuck. And sometimes a bit of brainstorming always helps, doesn't it? And I thought, with them being back in a palm, hey, up, the den of, den of iniquity is dying again. <laughs> but, but I just thought I could do with a... Bit of brainstorming, pick your brains, so to speak, because at the moment I'm a little bit stuck. That's the reason why I'm posted out since from I think since Wednesday. And that was all, and now when I've noticed this, this my Ashley thing in twenty fifth, twenty sixteen, I think I've been stuck. I've been editing that and sorting things out and getting it all wrapped up. It's taking some time. I'll give it that. So I suppose it's a could say it's a bit of a daily blase documentary, but but it's really really shocking what if you watch it you'll be really really shocked what you hear. It's absolutely amazing what people real there he is, Mister Gammon himself, father of the house. It'll be it'll be lathered, it'll be lathered tonight, won't it? In in the in the subsidised bar. No, is that Diane Abbott? Yeah, yeah, I think that's Diane Abbott. I didn't quite see. Oh dear, Betty Booth, right? Cheers, my cheers, Valentine. I can't think of a name. Yeah, cheers for that. Let's sit with it. Is willing to be chosen as speaker, and I call Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Yeah. Oh dear, I think that answers your question. Firstly, I'd like to thank 
my constituents of Chorley, for returning me to this House and allowing me to put myself forward again as Speaker. It is an honour to serve the people of Chorley, as That's I have great. done steadfastly. Cheers for that, Obscura. That sounds interesting. As a councillor and a local, on that local authority, then they're a member of Parliament for the last 27 years. I would also like to thank my wife Catherine and daughter Emma and the staff in Chorley in that constituency office for all their support. Of course, for me, it was the first time in my political career campaigning without hearing the wise words of my late father Doug, giving me his opinions on how to campaign. <laughs> Was going. <laughs> he was always going to give me that. Whatever the polls were doing, whatever needed to be said, I can still hear him now saying, don't stop now, you have to keep going. <laughs> well, I've got to say, Doug, after 25,000 steps a day during the campaign, <laughs> I certainly did do that. Yeah. I want to say a warm welcome to all the new members of the House. Yeah. May I also welcome Sir Edward Lee, to his new role as far of the House, yeah. Yeah. and to Diane Abbott in her place as Mother of the House. Yeah. Sir Edward, you have served this place and your constituents for 41 years. Mr. Diane, you have served for 37 years and broken many glass ceilings along the way. Yeah. Thank you to the former father of the House, Sir Peter Bottomley, and of course to the Mother of the House, Baroness Harriet Harman. Yeah. And can I thank them for the support that they gave me during the speakership? Sir Edward, I know you're a man that respects traditions. Indeed, when you ran for speaker in 2019, you were keen to bring back the use of the wig for the speaker. <laughs> Hopefully, though, you'll look kindly on me and agree I still have a decent enough head of her. <laughs> Cheers for that, Obscura. That was a brilliant. Cheers for that. As the former member for Litchfield. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm only joking, Mike. <laughs> I was thinking just the other day, you must be the only person that went to bed last Thursday mm -hmm. evening as a father of six children and woke up the father... Cheers for that falafel, and uh, yeah, I'm very well, and hope you are well too. It's been an absolute privilege to serve this house. I think it's uh, Lindsay Hoyle again, Paz Newes. I've got to say that four and a half years have flown. With the authority of the chair comes great responsibility. Yeah, I like, I I like uh, Barry Gardner as well, Ali Dawson. I know from experience that decisions have consequences. But with experience comes wisdom, and if re-elected, I will be guided by that as I continue to be fair, impartial and independent. To say I have had the most unusual speakership in the last Parliament is an understatement. Yeah, you're not wrong there. From ensuring that the House could function during the COVID pandemic, and to new members, they might want to Google the Reese Mogg Conga, <laughs> to adapting no technology past, no developed during COVID to allow President Zelensky to be the first world leader to broadcast to MPs in this chamber. Yeah. It was, of course, an honour to represent this House at the lying in state of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. I say, if you come up with ideas, I've got a pen and paper, I've got some brilliant ideas. Cheers. Needless to say, in this role, you need staying power. I've already been speaking during the tenure of three Prime Ministers, two monarchs, <laughs> and one Jim Shannon. <laughs> there has never been a dull moment, but it is an incredible job which I want to continue. There is so much more still to do. Because I care about the reputation You're and the standards of this house. Does, I it? care about enabling the government to do its job in this chamber and for the opposition to hold the government to account. I care about supporting backbenchers to pursue issues which are important 
to their constituencies. And as a backbench member for many good years, idea, sir. I know good, how good idea, yes, is. Courts. And I care about you individually, both as members who have a job to do in this building, as people trying to do those jobs with constituents, staff and families to consider. I've worked tirelessly and will continue to do so to keep members safe, which is the fundamental part of protecting democracy. On that basis, I submit myself to the House as your Speaker, seeking to be your champion. Yeah. Yeah. I think others might not agree with you there. Honourable Member for Lancaster and Wire to move the motion. Thank you, Sir Edward. I beg to move that Sir Lindsay Hoyle do take the chair of the House of Commons. The best thing, as far as I'm concerned, about having Lindsay as Speaker is how good it is to have someone in the chair who doesn't have an accent. <laughs> Do you prefer me to be in the chair? Over the past six weeks, and they agree with me too. <laughs> so I figured it out, Lindsay, is that we're not the ones with the accents, it's everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, Lindsay is a great champion uh, for Lancashire, just as he is for this House of Commons, and none of us in Lancashire could have imagined that Nancy Pelosi would walk those famous cobbles <laughs> of Coronation Street. But Lindsay, you did it. Ma- understandable, it seems there's no part understandable. of Lancashire's cultural reputation that is out of bounds for Lindsay when hosting international speakers. Indeed, having a pint of mild and the robes return with Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> and it's a great pleasure today to be able to speak about my good friend from Chorley. But Lindsay, I have several friends from Chorley, oh dear. Including, <laughs> <laughs> including my office manager, Stephen who often regales my Lancaster constituency office with tales of his childhood from Lancashire's second town. (laughs) And one of my favourite anecdotes is of Chorley Zoo, and I didn't know Chorley had a zoo. Apparently it's known as Chog Zoo, which might be a first reference of Chog in Hansard, which is a slang for Chorley. But upon further investigation, uh, this zoo was in fact Pet's Corner in Astley Park. (laughs) However, to this day, I suspect a young Stephen was actually mistaking the Hoyle Household Menagerie <laughs> as an actual zoo. Because with cats, dogs, parrots and tortoises, uh, Lindsay Hoyle really does live out that truism that we are a nature, uh, nation of animal lovers. <laughs> but if you head three hours south from Lancashire, you'll find yourself here. And arriving in this grand building as a newly elected member is daunting. The weight of pressure that you feel to deliver for your constituents, to use parliamentary procedures that seem so confusing, to bring about the change that you've promised can be immense. And it can be difficult to know where to start. Good but idea, a good place Flapple. to start is by electing a good Speaker mm. of the House of Commons. Mm. One with experience of eventualities that could not be foreseen. Lindsay recalled in his remarks the COVID restrictions we needed to adapt to at speed during the pandemic. Indeed, he is the speaker who steered us through that pandemic and steered us through those re-smog congas. He adapted procedures for the times we found ourselves in. But it's also important to know that you have a speaker who champions the voices of us backbenchers. One who ensures that all voices, government and opposition, are heard. Our speaker is fair, impartial and independent. Newly elected members, will find a great friend in our speaker, and I know I have. Being from Lancashire myself, I have had the good fortune of knowing Lindsay before I was elected here, and over the years, he has been a great source of advice and guidance, some of which I took, and some of which I chose to ignore. (laughs) But all I can say is that the advice that I ignored, I regret ignoring, and live to tell the consequences. So, Despite being annoyingly right about many well, things, which is a good Lancashire trait, by the way, um, he will ensure <laughs> that his door is open to all members at times of need. And I can vouch that he does a good brew. It's Yorkshire tea, though. But if you prefer something from the right side of the Pennines, from the Red Rose County, it's the only place on this estate I've managed to get a hot Vimto outside of my own office. <laughs> However, Lindsay, we all have our character flaws. And regrettably, Lindsay does not support Lancashire's finest football team, Barrow. (laughs) Instead, donning the collars of Bolton Wanderers. But 
Note, oh, we have a bottom one of us there. Uh, but note, that is a team which has both blue and red on its crest, and I think that exemplifies Mr Speaker's even-handedness. <laughs> and as a proud champion of Lancashire's rugby league tradition, when outside of Westminster, his favourite place is cheering on Warrington Wolves or, in the summer months, Lancashire County cricket. And like all good sports people, Lindsay knows fair play and hard work. And for all those reasons, and so many more, I am proud and honoured to propose that Sir Lindsay Hoyle takes the chair today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is that Sir Lindsay Hoyle do take the chair of this House as Speaker. As many as are of that opinion say aye. All those who believe that Daily Blase should take the seat say aye. Farage and 30p Lee that I've seen 30p Lee surprise yeah surprise Farage isn't suing the government because Mr Speaker didn't reform <laughs> yeah exactly establishment stitch up before I take the chair of speaker elect I wish to thank the house for the honour that is again bestowed upon me I am aware thank you Marcy. that this is the greatest honour it can and give falafel. any of thank you. I propose to do all within I think my that's power unanimous. to preserve and cherish its best traditions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, could I just also say thank you to both of you, Kat and Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Before I call the Prime Minister, could I just say that we have a busy day ahead of us with further ceremony in the House of Lords and the most returning honourable members to be sworn in. I therefore encourage speeches from Prime Ministers, of the Opposition and other leaders well, this should be interesting, that, I would discourage, <laughs> that I would hope they can be quite brief today. <laughs> and I do hope that members will respect that it is only leaders, and I am sorry for other members that may wish to speak. But I've got to say a big thank you to the thank staff you, of this House yeah. for the way that they've ensured all new members, the way that they've been brought in and shown the way around. I hope the bodies and everybody involved has made a real difference. I've got to say it is light years from 97 when I first came in. And may we I won't have a problem that. just saying, I now call won't have a problem. the Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer. Yeah. It would have been funny if they'd have said... <laughs> Mr Speaker-elect, on behalf of the whole House, may I be the first to congratulate you Thank on you, your Robert. re-election. Those of us here in the previous Parliament will always remember the wonderful support that you provided to the former Conservative member, Craig McKinley, yeah. and his inspiring battle to overcome his injuries from sepsis. All of those returning will remember, as I do, the speech he gave uh, just a few weeks ago, which was inspiring and moving, and we wish him well. And I had the privilege on that occasion uh, to meet his family and his young daughter. That support, yeah, no, Mr. Speaker elect, but, yeah. was characteristic you of your profound care for the interests and welfare of all members, uh, especially backbenchers. And I'm grateful that new members will be able to look to you as they begin the great privilege of serving their constituents in this House. And may I too welcome each and every one of the new members who is here for the first time starting their great responsibility. May I also thank, thank Sir Edward for presiding over this election and congratulate him on becoming the new father of the House. Yeah. More than 40 years of continuous service. That is a stunning achievement. Years, I'm and now, getting back in the 1970s, Sir Edward wrote a book uh, described as, and I quote, a personal collection of quotations 
dating from 3000 BC to the present day, which might be said to cast some light on the workings of the Tory mind. <laughs> Mr Speaker-elect, after the last six weeks, I think it might be time for a new edition. <laughs> Mr Speaker-elect, you preside over a new parliament, the most diverse parliament by race and gender this country has ever seen. And I'm proud of the part that my party has played in that, the part that proud of the part that every party has played in that, including in this intake the largest cohort of LGBT plus MPs of any parliament in the world. Yeah. And given all that diversity, Mr Speaker elect, I hope you will not begrudge me for a slight departure from convention to also pay tribute to the new mother of the House, Diane Abbott, yeah. who has done so much in her career over so many years to fight for a parliament that truly represents modern Britain. We welcome her back to her place. And now, as in any new parliament, we have the opportunity and the responsibility to put an end to a politics that has too often seemed self-serving and self-obsessed and to replace that politics of performance with the politics of service. Because service is a precondition for hope and trust, and the need to restore trust should weigh heavily on every member here, new and returning alike. We all have a duty to show that politics can be a force for good. Also, so whatever our Rishi Sunak says, this country's gone to rack and to ruin the since the Labour Party United got in. a common endeavour of national renewal and make this new parliament a parliament of service. Thank you. Yeah. I now call the leader of the opposition, Rishi Sunak. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker-elect, uh, I'm pleased to join the Prime Minister in welcoming you back to the Speaker's chair. And can I also... Praise the wonderful speech from the Honourable Member for Lancaster and Wire. Hello, yeah. yeah. Alden. Looks happy. Can I start by congratulating the Prime Minister on his election victory? And as he takes on Very his slow, formidable well task, kipper. he and his family deserve the good wishes of all of us yeah. in this house. Yeah. Now, in our politics, we can argue vigorously, as the Prime Minister and I did over the past six weeks, but still respect each other. And whatever <laughs> disputes we may have in this Parliament, I know that everyone in this house will not lose sight of the fact that we are all motivated by our desire to serve our constituents, our country, and advance the principles oh, no, of the I know you mean, I wondered if it was saying it through and gritted teeth. And every member, new and old, let me welcome them to their places and congratulate them on their results. <laughs> to be sent to this place by one's constituents is the greatest honour, privilege, and responsibility. I know every one of us will be trying to repay the trust placed in us, and I look forward to continuing to represent the interests of my own rural North Yorkshire constituents. What, in California? One of the great aspects of our system is no matter how high you rise, you still have that constituency which keeps you grounded. And my advice to all members is to appreciate the role that you have every day that you have it. <laughs> and for those of us in my party, let me begin with a message to those who are no longer sitting behind me. I am sorry. We have lost too many diligent, community-spirited representatives Don't need your style, whose Smith. wisdom and expertise will be missed in the debates and discussions ahead. It is important that after 14 years in government, the Conservative Party rebuilds. So now we will take up the crucial role of His Majesty's official opposition, professionally, effectively and humbly. And restoring trust begins by remembering that being here is an opportunity to do what those we serve expect of us. And in our case, that means holding the new government to account. Yeah. Can I congratulate the father of the House, the member for Gainsborough? My right honourable friend has given 41 years of remarkable, dedicated service to this House and his constituency. Well, I know full years of well getting how my right honourable friend fights bar. for the interests of his constituents, and I applaud him for that. My right honourable friend is also testament to the benefits of an early morning dip in the Serpentine. <laughs> and members may be interested to note that the Bottomleys have also had a bidding, big influence on my right honourable friend's career. It was in 1974 that my right honourable friend ran against Arthur Bottomley in Middlesbrough in his first effort to enter this place. And Absolutely today flat, he takes flat over flat. from Sir Peter, who will be missed. Yeah. And can I also congratulate the new mother of the House, the member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington. We have our differences on policy, but no one 
can deny the right honourable lady's important role in this house. Have we given the money the back to that Dharma yet? Yeah. So many young women of colour that she has provided. Yeah. The right honourable lady is true in every sense of the word, a trailblazer. Yeah. Yeah. And can I join with you, Mr. Speaker elect, to thank House staff for their hard work in welcoming our new colleagues to this house and their service over the coming Parliament. And finally, may I congratulate you, Mr. Speaker elect. When you first ascended to the Speaker's chair, you did so with a healthy majority, and that was testament to your wide appeal and the confidence in which this House places in you and your judgments. The last Conservative Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Major, who spoke from these opposition benches, said about the role of the Speaker, the job specification is pretty daunting. The patience of Job and the wisdom of Solomon are only the basic requirements. <laughs> We demand also impartiality, independence and fairness. Well, Mr Speaker-elect, you have shown over the past four and a half years how to protect that careful balance. The last few years in this House have been at times difficult, and you, Not sir, have always brought this House together. <laughs> that was clear when we lost our colleague, Sir David Amos. And I know your guidance and support for <laughs> members then like was greatly barriers. appreciated. <laughs> it is a privilege to be in this House. Our democracy is powerful and, as we have witnessed, it can be definitive. But I know that this House will, true to its best traditions, hold the executive to account. And I know that Mr Speaker-elect will facilitate that. So in conclusion, Mr Speaker-elect, I have no doubt that we will face difficult days together in this place. But I also know that I speak for the whole House when I say that we will all welcome your leadership and guidance in the months and years ahead. Yeah. 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 You are, in California. Sir Edward Lee. Oh, good God. <laughs> Mr Speaker-elect, as the first backbencher to speak in this Parliament, I seem to remember that almost the very first thing you said, almost before you even arrived in the chair to start your distinguished career as our Speaker, you said that your primary job was to defend us backbenchers. And I know that you will do that with enormous spirit <laughs> and diligence. Now. I know yeah. that this place is primarily about <laughs> great events and the government and being held to just by the opposition. Looks but it's also about the already. right and the duty for all of us backbenchers, yeah, even if some of our <laughs> views are a bit idiosyncratic, <laughs> <laughs> to have our views and yeah, to have our yeah, say. Yeah, they are all funny comedians. We all welcome the fact that we are such a diverse <laughs> parliament in every single way. But above all, we are a parliament of a diversity of views. We are all equal, although, to be fair, some are more equal than others. <laughs> but you will defend our right to speak our mind to hold the government to account. I'd like to pay tribute to my predecessor, Sir Peter Bossomley, who go, gave I such wonderful seen, service uh, to this uh, House. I haven't seen Nigel Fogarn of Ignorance, and he but sent me a I have seen 30 P. Lee. Uh, today. He said, have fun, do some good, and make people happy. And you, Mr Speaker... I think you stand up every single day and you can't make all of us happy all the time, but you try and make most of us happy for most of the time. Thank you very much. Jesus Christ. The Bill of the House, Diana. I would like to congratulate the Speaker-elect on his election and say this. He has been a speaker through tumultuous times, but he has never failed to serve with grace and expertise and fairness. I would also like to congratulate the 304 new members of parliament who have entered parliament after this election and say to them, it is a great job and you will never regret coming here. I would also like to congratulate the officers of the House who have organised such a meticulous and careful induction. I remember when I was a new MP, they just gave you a bunch of keys <laughs> <laughs> and told you to get on with it. So I have to congratulate the officers. I would also like to say that when I was a new member in 1987, there were only 40 female members of parliament. Oh, wow. 
today we have 264. Yeah. 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 Well, we're here for laugh. We'll listen to Dan Abbott and I will on. have lived to see this. And I can't speak about the increased numbers of female members of parliament without referencing my predecessor, Baroness Harriet Harman, yeah. Yeah. who did so much to work to have an equal and diverse house. Yeah. We are going into very tumultuous times. And historically, this house has played a role in these events, both nationally and internationally. And I'm sure it will be the same going forward and we will be presided over in the excellent way of the Speaker-elect. Yeah. I call the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Ed David. Yeah. Mr Speaker-elect, it is a real <laughs> pleasure and we'll privilege just to, Ed David to and say on go. behalf of these benchers, congratulations on your re-election. Yeah. Didn't he have the time you of his life, didn't he? too well how tough a task you're taking on, so thank you for agreeing to serve. You've shown time and again your commitment to the vital role this House plays in holding the government of the day to account. The new government of the day, as the Mother of the House has just said, faces a very difficult task, clearing up the mess it has inherited. We on these benches will hold the government to account. That is our job. We will focus on the health and care crisis. We will focus on ending the sewage scandal. We will focus on helping people with the cost of living crisis. Uh, Mr Speaker-elect, uh, um, the new government is, has a huge majority, and therefore it is a particularly difficult job for the Speaker to help the opposition parties as it does its job in holding uh, the government to account. I am sure you will do it with uh, independence and impartiality, as you always have done. And we on these benches want to work constructively with you as you do that, as the largest third-party force in this parliament for over 100 years. Yeah. And for new members, can I say, uh, Mr Speaker-elect has always oh, been a real champion syrup. for the security and safety <laughs> of all members and all our staff as well as looking after our health and welfare, and we are grateful to you for doing that, sir. Uh, just yesterday, you asked after my health following my active campaign. Um, and the House may be interested to know that after I had reassured you uh, about my health, you expressed Hello, Ray, real enthusiasm you well. about bungee Cheers jumping. For that. <laughs> so can I congratulate you again and wish you the very best for this Parliament? Yeah. I think we'll leave it there. Oh, do you want to listen to Stephen Flynn? Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I wish to, to begin by welcoming all new well, members to the Chamber, in particular those members from Scottish constituencies. There's probably a few more new members from Scottish constituencies than I would like to have seen. Uh, <laughs> well, but I do, yeah. I do look forward to working constructively with you to deliver in the best interests of the people that we are all so fortunate to represent. To you, Mr Speaker-elect, I think it's safe to say that me and you didn't always see eye to eye <laughs> during the course of the last parliament. There. But in politics and in life, I think it's important to let bygones be, be bygones and to focus on the future. And I think events of that time showed us that me and no, you have quite much. a lot in common. Uh, no when it comes to both then and indeed the general election, because this, despite the best efforts and indeed the best intentions of certain people, we both managed to hang on to the seats that we hold so dear. Mr Speaker, I do look forward to working constructively with you over the course of the coming weeks, months and years to allow us to best represent the people that we respect in the finest traditions of this House. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I now call the leader of the DUP, Gavin Robinson. I think we'll leave that there. <laughs>
But um, yeah, I'm I'm fine, Frank. Yeah, cheers for that. I'm just basically been doing a bit of a live stream because I'm sort of like I'm a little bit lost for ideas because like you know my channel it's about select committees and house of commons and stuff like that. And to be honest, people have given me some brilliant ideas. You know, sort of like get my teeth into because like sometimes. <laughs> Hello, Simon says, hope you're well. <laughs> and, yeah, family are spot on. Cheers for that, Frank. But, yeah, I was, I was sort of like, um, I was just sort of like needing some ideas. Because, like, uh, on, what I did before, I just basically just went, hello, hello, Bernie. I'm glad to hear you well, Bernie Burrows. But, like, I was sort of like, Stuck for ideas. What I did for a few weeks, I basically went looking back in time for for select community because I know you all and do enjoy them. And and I'm going back to the a couple of years and I'm thinking, hello, Carly Brighton back. Did I did I say that not right? I do hope I do. Oh, sorry if I butchered your name. You name I do apologize. Good. Is it is it morning in Michigan? Mi Michi Michigan, Michigan, should I say? Uh, yeah, yeah. There, as I say, the reason why I've I've not I've not done much because like all my select committee meetings that I've been finding and they're, they're all been out. So I basically just thought Parliament's enough. I thought why don't I just do a live stream for a bit and sort of like see if I can get some ideas from you. You know, get give me some. Oh, th thank God for that. It's something I don't, I don't like doing, um, you know, butchering people's name. So thank thank God for that. Hope you're well. Hope you're well, Kelly. And uh, hope the weather's nice in Michigan. But yeah, I've had a couple of, I've had some really, really good ideas, you know, top 10 or top fives through history, getting chucked out of commons, best ever one-liners and top 10 debates and rage, rage, rage moments and, Best takedown slick committee meetings, best Chris Bryant highlights. No, we're not gonna listen to this clown. You... <laughs> it's alright, I'm listening to him, so you don't have to. <laughs> okay, but it's Talking, just like, just like, yeah, uh, it's talking waffle. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. What is Barry West? Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, it's. I would go. I would only going to do it for about an hourish anyway, because I've got other things that I wanted to do. But I just wanted to see if I can get some ideas from people, you know, because like. Yeah, so don't worry about Rabbi. I've turned him off because for a simple reason. Why should I let you have a listen to this prat? I was, let's just say that people weren't in, impressed. But yeah, so no worries, Barry West. It's not a problem. But anyway, I hope you have a good day. Anyway, but yeah, though, I've got some really good good ideas which was really helpful because like you know sometimes you get you get what you call is it mind block block or whatever because i was struggling for ideas so i just thought while well, the recess is open I'll just ask you the rarest of animals the rat that refuses to leave the sinking ship <laughs> Brilliant stranded starfish. <laughs> yeah, but it's so, I've I've got some good ideas here because I I really needed needed some help because like our I suppose it's a bit a little bit like writer's blocking it. That's the word I were after because I was struggling. I was struggling. They was giving me some. But like, as I say, I've I've got a little. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't stand hearing him. So why should I allow it? <laughs> let him spew his drivel all over to you I, I could just talk over him because he didn't really say anything interesting just sounded like a prat but yeah I just needed some ideas you know get me get me 
brain going because I was proper, proper struggling. And like, as I say, I've I've got a little project that I've been doing over the last last few few days, Kylie. It's been really interesting because I'm a bit like as I said earlier, I um, typed in best best uh, best uh, select committee moments, and I came up with, and it gave me a top five. It gave me a top five, and there were one or two in there, and I've been used. And I've sort of like what I did do. I thought, right, if I can find these clips, I'm give it give something interesting. But I, at the time, I was I picked one. It was in from 2016 about the Mike Ashley uh, the Sports Direct scandal. But my internet wasn't the best. It was absolutely horrendous. It kept bugging out, then starting again. So I just thought I'd refresh the page and started watching it. I thought I'll tell you, what, I'll just watch it till the end. Then once I get the to the best bits but the more i watched it the more i realized wow this was unbelievable when i when i get it sorted and get it all finished you will not believe what you are going to hear honestly you will not believe it it's absolutely shocking <laughs> from from little from people having to pay insurance to work there to where uh, people to women giving birth in in toilets because they're scared of lo losing their jobs. Yeah, we'll be Bernie Burrows. Yeah, we'll be interested interesting to keep an eye on how much MPs' expenses rise and fall. Yeah, that's an idea. I've got one or two ideas in like, you know, there's stuff like, you know, certain MPs on how they work for you and stuff like that. So I would, so I had one or two ideas in my mind, but I just needed that little bit of a help because sometimes you you can sort of like get get stuck for ideas and sort of like a bit of brainstorming. And all it says you've been been absolutely brilliant. You know, I've got some great ideas. So 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 I'm just going to basically ask. I think we've got about. About five or six minutes or so left, so because I, I'm so I'm just gonna ask if if you, anybody's got any more ideas, just let me know. As because so these will give me some great ideas. But what I'll but I I'll still crack on with this little project. I've nearly finished with it. I just like. I'm loyal to Scotland. Why is Streeting talking to his really private healthcare? Now that I don't know. Dennis. Now that I don't know. Another great line was Dennis Healy talk telling Jeffrey how that his verbal attack was like being savaged by a dead sheep. <laughs> why is why is Starmer keeping Tory austerity and policies? Now that, that I don't know yet. I'd say I've just been really been stuck in to this little project that I've been in, but it's just taking longer. But yeah, I suppose that's something to look at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> being savaged by a dead sheep. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's something I will really, really get my teeth in. But like, as I say, if, anybody's got some good ideas that maybe i can get my head get my teeth into because like all these will sort of like help me when parliament's in recess in future as well so because uh oh, when it comes to recess i'm i'm really really proper struggling uh who's jim Jim, Jim Alice, is it Jim Alister? Is that did I hear right? Yeah. So, if anybody can come up with any more great ideas, you know, with I think we've got about maybe about four or five minutes left. It's like this is just. It's like let's be honest. This is yeah. Is this the one who uh, our frog face is trying to tout to get on side with him? Yeah, yeah, that's one of my great bugbears when it came to this election. You know, 
it seemed to me that spent spend far too much time you know talking about our frog face and let's be honest they only got one more seat than green party where they were hardly got any attention did they they were basically ignored and to be honest i, I was wondering how we're fearing for him at this election because i thought with uh Caroline Lucas stepping down, I thought they might be gone, but no, oh, fair play to them. Fair play to them. Four MPs. So, so th but yeah, that'll be interesting. I totally agree, Simon says, because, because of a simple reason. They were largely ignored, which a lot of you others, and, and it annoys me because I think, yeah, the post office scandal is. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, it certainly does. I'll probably put that down, actually, you know. This. Yes. Well, that's that's the end of that. Suspended till three forty-five. So whatever that's about, who cares? But <laughs> but yeah, like as I say, you know, you you've got, given me some cracking ideas, and uh, but but they'll go on the back burner until I finish this little. It's a good going to be about a good hour and a half. This this uh, this project. That I've got going because I were only going to do a couple of clips of it, but it, some more and more I watched it, I just think it really needed more highlight because of the simple reason. Some of the stuff I heard was shocking, absolutely shocking. And the, after the union meet representative, it was the two companies that were basically they were sort of like uh, agency workers, and uh, wow. Unbelievable! <laughs> they got a right. They they did get a bit of a right uh, roasting, and there was, there was some young young people in there who was still there now, but they look a lot younger. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, before I go, anybody got any more ideas before we go? Because I know the hours are because I'm gonna be in a minute, sort of like sorting out dinner, and so any more ideas before we go? Before we go, because uh, I've got some cracking ideas, and uh, I want to thank you all for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, but I did want to ask, and I did want to ask before I go. Those who saw the uh, Diane Abbott speech, do you think she looked rather emotional? You, you tell, I got the feeling that emotion, her emotions were getting. She was, you know, I don't know whether it's a case of. Bit of anger in there, or a bit of uh, that's an idea, yeah. Well, that's an idea, I'll pull that down, yes, yes, totally agree. Stranded starfish, uh, our father of the house will now be propping up the bar, getting absolutely blathered. <laughs> no, that's an idea. Private eye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Highlighting and behavior pain. Behave and antics, yes. That's brilliant. I've got some cracking ideas. Yeah, yeah. I, I, cause like when I'm watching it with with interest, you know, you could you could hear her breathing getting heavy, and I'm just thinking, either that's anger or whether she's gonna start to cry or something and i thought yeah that's that's the reason why i was just watching i thought because i always like to hear what diane abbott has to say anyway so anyway 
it, well, we're on to the hour now, and I'll be cooking dinner. To, I just want to say thank you for turning up. Also, thank you for giving me some fantastic feedback and some brilliant ideas. And uh, I'll probably do a couple of more live streams here and there in, over the next over the week or so because while I'm doing my little side project, I've nothing really going on apart from doing a bit of research on these so while i'm not re re being in, while i'm not doing any editing and stuff like that i can always do an hour live stream here and there can't i so anyway thanks for turning up also if if you if you watch the video back and and you've got some ideas just put it in comments below i'll i'll have a read and have a look so i shall Play a call for ID card. Yeah, more rights to be flushed down the bog. Now, I, I watched... Uh, I've forgotten. Her name. Zoe... Zoe Gardner. She... Is that her name? I forget. I'm sure that's her name. She thought it was a silly idea. Yeah, Dowden's face. It looked like a well-slapped kipper, didn't it? Yeah, no worries. No worries, Falafel. Ch cheers for tuning in. Thanks for some brilliant ideas as well. So I shall love you and leave you. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. And if you want to watch, if you watch this back and you come out with any ideas, let's like say put, put them in comments below because I'll read them because I need all the, all the ideas I can get my hands on. So cheers for turning up. Have a nice